I will go ahead and ask, uh, who was it, BSL? Do you wish white or black? You get to choose. White or black, what do you want? Yes, either or, which one do you want? Yes, choices, choices. BSL wants white, alrighty then. That means I get to be black. Alright, how do I want to pick? I don't think I want to do a specific opening, so I guess I'll just go ahead and take dual 3-4 points maybe, and approach whatever's there. I think that's what I have planned on doing. Let's go ahead and set players as BSL and the Poseidon. There we go. And in case anyone wonders who's playing who, I also put it in the rules. Alright, um, let's go ahead and approach, or take the corner, sorry, so we can approach the 4-4 potentially, maybe. See how that turns out. Now, I don't want to do orthodox, because I'm sure BSL knows exactly how to handle orthodox. I'm sure everyone here who frequents my lectures knows how to at least get the first 10 to 15 moves of an orthodox uh, opening correct. Now, I don't want to do uh, an opening, a set fuseki, so I'm not going to go ahead and pull back on Chinese. I'll just go ahead and settle here while my eye twitches incessantly. Hmm, interesting choice. Uh, I guess I will continue that and approach again. And now we will see what BSL does. BSL chooses to pincer me. Now, the question is, since I am playing a bit of a territorial game based on all of my third line stones, am I more likely to jump out, or am I more likely to go ahead and simply take the corner? That is a very good question. If you said I am more likely to go ahead and take the corner, you are quite correct. My stones have essentially dictated that's more or less how I wish to play, and so that is what I will do. What about balance? Um, balance is good, I suppose. But consistency is also good. <clears throat> and that wasn't me laughing at that. I, I actually agreed. Um, I guess I'll just go ahead and connect. See what he does. He'll probably play right there. He'll play this move right now. Those of you watching later on YouTube can see where I'm circling my mouse. Ah, and he did it. Alright, so do I have Sente here? Is my corner fine? I think that area back in the corner is sufficient for me to live. I don't see anything else that's really vital right now. This does appear to be Sente-like. So I will go ahead and take Sente. And enclose my corner. White has now a very interesting decision on his hands. Is he going to build up or is he going to approach me? And he decides to approach. That's perfectly fine. I have to decide what I want to do. Hmm. 
need a plan here. Do I want Sente? Do I want to fight here? What do I want to do? Well, I don't want to pincer, I don't think. I don't really see what pincering will yield me. So, I think I kind of like the idea of ignoring him and reducing his framework, or the memorial that he's got going. I also like the idea of simply taking more territory. So I'm kind of caught between those two decisions right now. So let's go and have some fun and just cap his third line stone that he just built his wall off of and see what he does from there. BSL expresses his approval over my move. That's one of the reasons why uh, a lot of people like playing Go face to face. You can tell by the expressions your opponent's making how well you're doing, even if you can't judge the board for yourself. A lot of options here. Okay, he decides to go ahead... He decides to go ahead and cover that spot. Saying, if I want to come closer to that wall of his, he will let me. Probably the right decision. Anything else would have over-concentrated him. Now, while BSL is thinking about his move, I'm being told repeatedly to start a, uh, a uh, three-don series, or four-don series, or whatever, on IGS, which I keep forgetting exists, so I haven't really played on it in so long. I'm giving some thought to doing that. I'm sure more people would prefer if I began the KGS series. But that's actually harder to do, as it's a lot easier to rank up on here than it is anywhere else, initially. You know, on Tygam and... Uh, Indeed, my reduction is a bit successful here. But I'm not alive yet. I'm not connected. So as long as I'm not... Uh, I don't, blah, 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 can't speak. As long as I don't have shape, and as long as I'm not connected, then there's still potential to uh, harass me later on. So I might have gotten an initial decent result, but will that continue? Oh, it started raining over here. Depending on, depending on how sensitive my mic is today, you might hear that. So 
So any recommendations on where a newbie can learn about shape? Uh, believe it or not, I learned uh, the most about shape by, um, well, for starters, obviously, Go Books can help you with uh, shape. I'm sure there are books just on shape. Uh, I kind of learned a lot about shape just by uh, watching top-level players and seeing what shapes they made. Giuseppe also helps, but you have to be careful with Giuseppe, especially as a double-digit Q. You start um, memorizing too many Giuseppe, and that can seriously hurt you, especially if you're going over these, you know, long 20-plus move variations that you're probably never going to see. Might just wind up uh, confusing you. I know, I'm just pointing out that you might want to, you can try that, but if you actually apply that into your actual games, you might have a bit of a problem. Um, I'd say after 5Q, if you do not know the basic Chiseki, you really should memorize it. Um, but I actively began to pay attention to a bit more Chiseki at around 5Q or so, specifically the ones uh, that came up in my games. I wouldn't, like, go and sit down and memorize the Taisha or the Avalanche or whatever. I mean, those... I memorized how to avoid them, which that was helpful. But definitely the basic ones. And any ones that you encounter in your game. That's pretty much how I memorized Joseki. If I didn't know how to respond in a game, then I would go up and look over it later. Um, let's see, you played that. What do I want to do now? Hmm. Pretty certain I s should have been clamped to here. Tell you what, I'll just go ahead and live in my little corner. Well, BSL, you didn't uh, exactly completely miss what's going on here. Um, there's a very interesting reason as to why that's occurring. Which I will be going over later. Or sooner depending on what your next couple of moves are. Okay, so he's attacking us. Now, this is actually an interesting uh, move that I can definitely see the reason for. I think what he is betting on is that since I happen to have a weak group in the center of the board, that I cannot overextend myself without putting that group in danger. Because if I have a group that's running towards the center, where I already have a weak group, he can split me and try to profit on one or the other. That's a fairly good idea. And I'm fairly big message on Skype. So yes, I like that idea there. I really like it a lot. Not terribly concerned about it right now, but I do like it. And the reason why I'm not terribly concerned by it is because right now you've only got those four stones. I don't see you as being that strong.
Whoa, that's no, no, no. D bad choice of words. Um, I I don't see your group as being that strong. So I think if I'm getting stronger, then you also have to worry about the group getting stronger. So if we get into a fight, everyone's going to be hurting, not just my groups. 3Q is strong. Yeah, I am as well. Yes, the process of getting stronger at Go is simply the realization that you are horrible. See, he's completely surrounding me. What do I want to do? Oh yeah, definitely. You were all much stronger at 15Q. No, actually, I was the strongest at 8Q, I think. I remember 8Q. My corner's being surrounded. I don't like that. Tell you what, how about I ignore that for the moment and attack you? Let's see, how to attack. If I attack here, then you can play there, and that's still a bit of a problem. If I play here, you're gonna play there, and then I can play there, and you're gonna Hane, and I'm gonna extend, and then you're gonna extend, and I don't know if I can kill that. I do like this, though. Let's see what this does. Maybe something, maybe nothing, I don't know. Because the question is, how do I handle that response and that response? Door number three is a lie. But a few more moves, and I think I'll go ahead and stop and review the game so we can see what's happening here. Wow. That is an impressive decision. You see what he's doing here? He made his decision, and he's sticking with it. He said, the entire top, I don't care. I want to attack your center. And that's what he's doing. So the question is now, can he kill my middle? Even if it doesn't happen, it made an interesting game to go over there, BSL. It's also simple enough that you can understand what's going on, and even our 10 and 13 Qs can understand what's going on. Everyone knows what's up with this game. It seems that he's changing his mind, yeah. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. 
BSO might be the man with the plan. Let's wait and see. Will I turn on a fan? There we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to get cut, I guess. Okay, so he wants me to worry about that. Da, 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 da. Time for some reading. Do I want to worry about this? I don't want to worry about anything. I just want to kill him. Mm -hmm. That could be the plan, that could be the plan. Okay, so now I am in trouble. I have got a little bit of no shape in the center. Just, just a slight case of no shape. So that's a problem. Without a doubt, uh, I can jump, but that's going to get cut off. Uh, I can jump over, but I don't see what that's going to accomplish. So I need forcing moves. Where can I get my forcing moves? Well, I might get a forcing move by attaching to stones. So I'm going to try this one first. No, I kind of like this one first, because then I can... No, I'm going to attach here first. J7 is one noob that I considered, yes. There is another that I hope to play. I want to play O4 as who? As black? As white? As black. I see. O4 would be very, very unusual, because it's not really threatening anything. I guess maybe you're threatening Q7 cuts if you play O4. You were thinking center of three stones. Okay. One eye have been acquired, I think. Ooh. Let's go ahead and see if we can't get out of here. All right, that's a bit of a peaceful uh, ending to this, I have to say. I think I'm going to go ahead and stop you here there, BSL, so we can go ahead and review the game, if you don't mind. Because you did give up a lot. And, uh, I mean, you can go ahead and, you know, secure the areas into your next largest area of territory. But I also have... Oh, get rid of that. I also have a few uh, large points to follow up. And since the corner, unless you can make that alive, those stones on the top, that's a lot given up. Let's go ahead and review that. And get rid of those. Alright, so I opened up territorially. Now, this was okay, but I think this is incredibly slow. I do not like playing this way. If I was going to play high, I would, I guess I'd do so, but I would definitely play elsewhere at this point. I would approach one of the three four stones. If I don't like this, then I never would have played high. I would have backed off low. That way, if I go ahead and play here, well, for one, you can go ahead and ignore me and approach. 
but if we play the same thing that we just did, you don't have any uh, feeling that you that it's vital to follow up here, lest I uh, approach your uh, cornerstones, like we have here. Because I'm guessing that you simply played this because you did not want me to get in h3. Right, so I think that's too slow. If I was worried about that, I either would not have played f4, or I would have played f4 and just played elsewhere and let uh, the fight begin there later on. Something like that. So here you pincer me, I guess because you decided that you did not want symmetrical positions here. It's a pretty good reason. Unfortunately, we're left with a little tiny bit of a problem here. The minute I go into your corner, um, white could play elsewhere, yes, I suppose. But the minute you go ahead and uh, allow me into your corner and decide to build up, you're building off a low stone. So typically my next response here is actually probably going to be either the cap or maybe even a shoulder hit. Just to ensure that you can't go ahead and uh, expand off here later. So I enclose could or have blocked the other direction. Uh, I'm not certain. Oh, this direction. Uh, could play this way, yeah. K3 is not adversely affected by this. Still have a bit of Aji remaining in uh, Q6. Typically in this position we want to go ahead and respond, make sure that this stone's not going to be going anywhere. Only problem with that is that it also opens up to further reduction. And that's a bit uncomfortable as well. So we find ourselves having to leave uh, some sort of Aji behind since we're uh, playing a bit slowly early on. So you approached me, I ignored, because I didn't want you doing that. Now here... Uh, first question <coughs> is uh, your response. Were you aware it was a little bit slower when you played it? Um, L2. Were you aware that L2 was a bit of a slow response when you played it? This little move right here. I see. Well, you're right. Leaving it, simply playing away, and not doing anything would definitely allow me to get shape. So I could go ahead and poke, 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 and then, you know, that's pretty successful. At this point, as, as white, I would just want to resign. So, yes, I would definitely not want to leave this. However, you are a little bit strong on the right-hand side, so one thing that I would want to start, uh, start reading out is, can I just go ahead and play moves like L4 or K4? I mean, if we play this way, for example, where does this go? This seems to favor you, so I can't play this way. So I guess I do have an option of playing the Atari over, but that's not really helpful giving you fourth line territory. I have no choice but to play this way. So that would have been better. Uh, this would have been a little better too, simply because you are strong here. Me and the question of where am I going with this? is a very, very important one. At this rate, I'm just going to be making a very, very strong group 
of yours out in the center, you can go ahead and obviously still profit off of this later on. Without worried about being over-concentrated, I don't know if this is going to live, it has to run far, far away. So even something like this seems like it would be fine. What about the double cap? Um, you mean this? Yeah, this is a move we typically don't see too often. Simply because white's or black's response is obviously going to be pretty easy. I mean, I can just go ahead and play here, and chances are you're going to just go ahead and, you know, make sure I can't invade you. At that point, I guess I'm fine. Um, I guess you can try to get a little bit uh, more aggressive with this and say, that's going to be my protection, I'm going to keep attacking you. But by doing so, you lose any hope of, you know, securing this for yourself later. And this is not going to really cut me off anytime today, I guess. You can also go ahead and uh, attach to your stone, try to get stronger. Then figure out how you're going to respond to this one. I've also got attachments to your initial stone, so you have to be careful of that. Because these stones really start working together with each other. The attachment here and here begins making shape. So I did this, and then I made some shape in the center. You followed up. Usually we see the attachment. And then either if I play here, you'll get a nice uh, little area on the left. It's a nice bit of territory while you're settling, which would be fine for you. Or I guess I'll just connect. Which is also okay. All I have to do is make sure I don't kill that stone. And then I'm going to essentially get the exact same result. This way, on the other hand, you're just inviting me to go ahead and push and cut you. Which was my first response. And probably what I would do in an actual game. Go ahead and see how these two different groups are actually going to uh, settle themselves. Because I'm pretty much fine in my corner. I think. I hope. This wasn't too bad of an idea. I would probably start leaning immediately to put pressure on this. And if white actually responded, or if black actually responded, I would just play this around the middle. If I was aiming for that particular split. Instead I get to attack you. So while you're working up to an attack against me, I'm actually getting a pretty serious attack against your top group. It's not really being used for much right now. Um, here... I might play one more point just to get a response, but after that I would be looking to see how I can go ahead and um, attack black. Now that you have me surrounded, it's time to go ahead and start poking at my shape. I'm getting a little bit stronger here. This I didn't like too much either. Because it's a natural response for me to go ahead and uh, play here. And now you're kind of inviting a co, I suppose. Or even if it's not a co. Yeah. And after this, I was pretty much out. 
So thank you for that. Uh, got a few more people watching now. Uh, that was what, 3Q? Um, we actually have some 5, 7, 8s, and 9s now. Or I can jump up into the Dons. So by that, are there any 1 Dons who do wish to play? And are there any 7 to 9 Qs that wish to play? Well, 7 to 12 Q, I guess. Why not? We do have a Q that wants to play. Do we have any Dons that wish to play? Robert is not a 1 Don. Robert's like... what? What are you, Robert? I don't think Robert's 1 Don. I thought... I had this weird, you know... flash of you being like Fordon or something. Yeah, I see right here in your games list. You beat a Fordon by 22 points. Isn't that adorable? Ah, luck. Good old luck. Well, at least you're at least two Don, but whatever. We can go with Robert, or we can go with a Q. Well, my only uh, worry about playing Robert is we won't actually have enough time to get to something worth reviewing. So we did have one person as a Q who wanted to play, and we have one person who we don't really know. So Robert hasn't said yes or no, but a Q has said yes, so last chance to speak up or I'm selecting the Q. I'll play if you want, but I don't care. Well, that's the... Th well, if you don't care, then I'm going to pick someone who does care. Alright, what was the other person's name? Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling... While I'm blind, I can't not find it. Seriously, it's like either completely disappeared. Okay, we can't have to. Yeah, Lotus Mind it was, I think. Do you still wish to play Lotus Mind, even though I referred to you as the Q half a dozen times? All right, then. And do you wish to be white or black? He wishes to be black. Oh, righty then. Probably a good choice. And set player. Well, wait. Scroll back. Thank you. Set players. <laughs> this is where I find out that Lotus Mind is really a 5 Don, only with a Sandbagger account. No, it is not uncommon. I've actually encountered that multiple times. I typically give uh, my first lesson for free just so people uh, can decide if they actually want to take lessons with me or not. And I don't know how many times I've actually encountered 
low to mid level dons, you know, posing as, oh yeah, I'm, I'm just a 5Q or something, just because they want to try to kill me. I find it funny. Depending, anyway. It can be amusing. How do you find out? Very, very quickly. You can tell, uh, you can get a pretty good idea of the rank of the uh, person you're fighting by their moves. I never play Taisha against my students. I don't barely even play Taisha in my own games. I mean, there's no reason to. I mean, it's a variation that if you haven't memorized, congratulations, you've just ruined a fourth of the board. I mean, playing the Taisha is essentially just a question to see how well the opponent, your opponent studied. That's pretty much it. I don't really see any other reasons for it. What I really, really hate, though, are those players who only play, like, 10 second go, but they've memorized, like, every Taisha and Avalanche and other obscure, like, 50 move variation that exist, and that's essentially their strength. They're like, yes, I'm going to memorize obscure variations and play them really, really fast, hoping you make a mistake. I hate seeing those kinds of players. Yeah, and trick plays. Very true. I think tie games like that as well. If you resign within the first couple of moves, well, I don't know what the exact number is. It doesn't count as uh, being rated. Ten here, okay. That is actually very, very common play, though, Robert. That isn't something that you can really get mad at. I mean, what you just described is essentially what I expect in most Q players, especially mid-level Q players, because they've studied life and death. They know that they can live here. They know that they can live there. So they try and do that. I mean, they've at, they're at the stage where they know they can, but they haven't quite realized that maybe you shouldn't. Just because you can do something doesn't mean it's a really great idea. It's kind of like driving the wrong way in the middle of traffic. Can you do it? Sure. And you might get to kill something. That's true, too. I think you're going to find your profit to be rather slight, though. All right, what do we want to do here? He says, no, I can't develop the top. I'm going to say, no, your group's not alive yet. Oh, it's not a good strategy. Oddly enough, I didn't uh, and I didn't start going through that until I was a Don level player. Because when I was a Q, I was all about influence. And then I turned territorial in a really bad sense where I just tried to live everywhere. And that really hurt. Okay, so how horrible is this a result for me? If I go here and he cuts, I'm fine. He goes there and I cuts. I guess we're still okay. Uh, 
Um, I'd say around 3Q I wanted to start killing everything. Okay, you're alive. Um, I'm curious, so let's go ahead and play here. I used to have a really tough, pro tough uh, problem actually playing people that were uh, lower ranked. So I didn't really know how to handle, um, I guess, what you would call bad moves. And when I learned exactly what Robert just said, everything became getting really easier. It's like, oh, I'm trying way too hard. They'll just kill themselves. That's a lot easier. Okay, so he played there. Does it look like I'm playing for influence? Darn it. We don't like you, the influence. But okay. I try not to give Don's handicap. I already lose the minute I see Handicap on the board. It's like, really? He's got every corner plus the center. Why am I still playing? It's like, well, I guess I'll just keep plopping stones down and hope he's retarded. Uh, do I? Not really, because I usually play on servers like World Baduk, or more importantly, Taigem, and you don't see Handicap on those servers. I used to give uh, nine stones to even ranked opponents back when I was, uh, what was it, seven or six Q? I mean, we played so horribly, we could legitimately do it if we just played utter trash.
That I have not heard. That I would have to see to believe. Trying to revive his stones. Alright, let's see what we have going on here. Do I have any weak groups? Eh. Eh. Mm. I'm going to say no. I know that this area with the cut point is not the healthiest, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's a weak group just yet. Uh, does he have a weak group? Eh, kind of, sort of. But, ooh, big point. Plop. I take big point first. Where are you? Well, it wasn't the largest point on the board, but it's not, not too bad. It is a point. And immediately going to respond to try to attack it. Oh, we're going to find out where the largest point was. Well, now we get to see what's going on in the middle. The middle is an interesting place to be. Okay. M4 does look fun. I was thinking of M3, though, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I muted there for a minute. But I think before I can play something like M4, I have to play something different. I'm going to play right here. You're allowed. Go is one of those games that does require some thought. So you're fine. Oh, I think he realized kind of what I was trying to do there a minute ago by saying I was going to play here. Obviously, he lives in the future and can see where my mouse was hovering. So, that's interesting. Because this doesn't really work out too well anymore. So, I will go ahead and play here instead. And I think with this, I might actually go ahead and stop you. Because we're running into a very interesting problem here.
that does deserve to be highlighted. And that problem is you've got a group on the right and a group on the left that are in trouble. And amidst all of that, you took time out to say, I want to secure my bottom. So we got a bad, bad problem with that. Because now I'm able to split you and figure out which one you want not to be alive anymore. Chances are you're going to go ahead and defend this one, which is still going to have a lot of problems to connect. But, you know, let's say it does. Nicely connected there. Then the question is going to become, okay, how are you going to get the other group out of there? Now that you probably can't connect top, bottom, right, not a uh, very good position to be in. Would have been awful to keep jumping forever. Um, if you kept jumping, I had planned on going here. Which you probably would want to ignore to surround me. Because the idea here is, if I go ahead and get some kind of shape here, let's say, then I'm going to go back and separate you and figure out which one you want to be attacked again. Maybe attack this one instead. Because if I actually just run you to your group, that makes your life a lot easier. Because now your stones are all connected up and I have yet to do anything useful. All I can do now is go back to those interesting points mentioned earlier, such as M4 or M3, since I have somewhere to run to. But I still have to be careful. Because I'm not convinced here that even on this board, that I'm completely alive yet. If I live here, let's say, let's go ahead and live here, um, there, you're alive. Or I'm alive, or someone's alive. Even if I go back and live there locally, I have to be very, very careful, because I can be surrounded still and attacked, which wouldn't be fun. But let's go ahead and review this. Thank you for playing their Lotus Mind. Now, uh, here's something interesting. We've got dual 3-4 points. Surely one is the same as the other. Not quite. I typically go ahead and uh, work off of the stone facing my opponent's stone first and foremost. Because if we progress as we did in the game, you're not really like You did, though, didn't you? No, you didn't. We're not really likely to go ahead and pincer from this position, because, as I've said many times before, it's way too easy for white to go ahead and jump out, get influence, and counterattack, which also serves as an expansion off of the cornerstone. Since I'm doing two things at once, black is typically not happy with this position. It becomes a little bit harder to actually respond to this, because certain pincers might yield unfavorable variations here. Why white first move was 3-4? Why not? There's nothing wrong with that. Is there a problem with this fir tree? Oh, how to choose. I see. Um, that's pretty much uh, a question of what does third and fourth line stones tell you about what you want. I mean, if I played fourth line, then maybe I'm more interested in... Um... Well, actually, that's not entirely true. Uh, there's a lot of different variations here. It's a question of which one that I wanted to accept. If I play here, for example, and let's say I just play this, then I'm opening up the possibility that maybe he'll approach me and I might have to deal with uh, Chinese variations. If I play here, he might go ahead and cross. That way he can approach my 3-4 four, my, uh, four stone. Now we're playing more of a territorial game. I'm fine with that. Um, if he doesn't do cross, well, he's not going to be able to approach this easily and get in a... Uh, 
Chinese variation, so I can still continue to go ahead and maybe play a uh, territorial game, balance game with another 4-4 four, four stone. Uh, really just preference. Here you have two options, uh, Lotus Pine. You can go ahead and Hane. If you do this, you are saying that you are interested in development on the left-hand side. You'd be able to play something like this, perhaps. Develop the left for yourself. If you say, no, I was not interested in territory, or influence, sorry, that's why I enclosed, I wanted territory, then you can go ahead and go to the corner. Oops, not that. And just go ahead and live there, that'd be fine too. Um, what happens if I Hane? What do you mean? If you play Sisa, okay. If I play right, oh, this. Then I have three stones that are not connected to each other. I have absolutely no idea how I would handle this position. I mean, I I guess I can try and play here, but I got a mild problem, because, I mean, there's still this cut point, right? There's no way I'm saving all of this. So you backed off, I made myself a little bit stronger, no problem. Here you can go ahead and push up if you wanted to, I don't think that's the right idea though, so ignore that idea. Now I think about it, if you actually pushed up I'd probably pincer you and you probably wouldn't be happy with me anymore for recommending that. Um, jumping away might have been a better idea. I might have gone more than one space, though, and I probably would have gone low to give myself a base, I think. No, C12 is too small. We don't have to worry about this cut point. It goes nowhere. I don't really like C12. I'd probably take something like C11. It allows the push, but getting a bit larger of a base. This I don't like so much because it's going to be kind of pressured again and now we've got to like live over here, or jump out or something. This, you, uh, no. Should definitely respond to this, as you saw in the game. If I push through, then they get to surround you and that's just way too much influence to give to me. Instead, you decide to play stone right there in the center. I obviously went ahead and surrounded your stones as a result of that. Um, I think you are probably better off either connecting or even playing B14. This, this I wasn't so certain about. Because the minute you made your jump, I want to play in here. Because if you keep responding to me, I'm very curious as to how you're going to live. Because it looks like maybe we can't right now. Because of that little uh, forcing move that you allowed me to get in there. Here I might Atari you. But I don't think you have an issue with me killing you. Because you've got two ways to make eyes. I mean, this looks like it's even sente at the moment. Because if I throw in, you can do there. And if I do there, you can go there. Yeah, you're fine. So I gave you sente to see what you were going to do. I expected you to strengthen your pincering stone by attacking me on top. This is what I uh, assumed that you were going to do, because I've got a large wall, you don't want me to attack your 
K16 stone. Time to make it a little bit stronger, maybe. Instead, you approach, so I play greedy. And then I play even greedier to try to expand. Your moves were fine here. Not so much here. Now you're in a dangerous position where you might be giving up your, your um, corner. Don't really have to do that. You could, for example, simply go ahead and attach and live. Or you can even attach here and live. Though you are noticing that if you do attach, you're giving up, you're hurting your center stone. I think that's probably why you decided not to do that. Which is a fairly not bad idea. But you are giving up a very large corner. This wasn't too bad. Take. I'm going to Atari. At that point, you can stop caring. Now you can go ahead and maybe use this. Build off the bottom. Because if I cut here, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I can annoy you with a bunch of forcing moves, but I'm not going to be able to kill you. Instead, instead, what did we do? Ah, uh, yes. Instead, you decided that you were going to uh, to revive your one stone. Now, the question here is, is this stone actually worth reviving? Uh, for that, we have to see if it's important. How do we tell if it's important? Well, it has to be doing something, preferably cutting something. Cutting stones are typically valuable because it keeps two groups for having to... Uh, it keeps two groups having to uh, find life. And that's always valuable. If your opponent's struggling and not quite alive yet, you can always profit by assaulting it. Uh, here, you're not cutting anything. So it's not a cutting stone. Um, doesn't seem to be poking out my eyes any. So it's not... Doesn't have any life and death value. Um, you're not reviving any Aji. not really expanding anywhere by adding to it. So not really that worthwhile of a stone. Probably better off going ahead and taking a large point at uh, Q10, getting yourself a bit of a um, double wing here. A lot of people have asked me, and I should keep pointing this out because I've been doing it all game, even though you guys can't see it, why I go into the tool menu and not use the hotkeys. Uh, that's because I'm lazy, and I like just leaning back and using my mouse and not my keyboard. That's why I'm not typing, so, yeah. You guys who have been asking that now have uh, your answer. Here, even if you're not going to go ahead and respond to my Atari, you should probably at least take the stone, because it's forcing. If I, you know, take this and go elsewhere, then you can just keep coming on in. And here, you're still running away. Uh, I kind of want to tell you to cut your losses. But since you are invested in this stone, I'd go ahead and jump it out. I suppose. This I did not like because it was giving you two potential weak groups. Uh, the cap would have been pretty nice. It kind of forces me to defend what I'm trying to get for myself while helping you in the middle. So that would be good. Um, simply saying, you know what, I'm going to look to my own groups first, forget whatever you're doing on the right-hand side, and playing a move to simply strengthen yourself there. I would like that too. Uh, since I like attacking things, I would also probably cut here. I don't expect this to live. I'm just wanting to know how white is going to defend against it. Because let's say I defend against it this way. Alright, obviously not alive yet, right? But it does give you this cutting stone this cutting point. Now, if I run through the same variation, that 
that's obviously dead. So by cutting here, I have to kill off these stones. You can then go ahead and get a few free moves if you want. Now, what is the point of all of that? Well, what's the point of any cutting stone? Make my group a little bit harder to uh, live. So after here, you'd be able to attack me in order to settle yourself. And that'd be nice too. Now, I don't expect a 13Q, or 12Q, sorry, to uh, have been able to read that out. That's a bit more for the single digit Qs. Because it requires being able to be comfortable with sacrifice, reading Aji, uh, accurately understanding the life and death situation of my group on top, which might be a little bit above what a 12Q can do all at once. Individually, probably. But you probably haven't put all that together in, uh, in your uh, games just yet. So we get into this little running battle here. You, as I mentioned, you left the running battle to try to secure territory for yourself, which allows me to divide and conquer. Pretty nice strategy, always has been, definitely is in go. Did you have any questions about the game? Did anyone have any questions about the game? Alright, glad you enjoyed it then. If there are no other questions... Is J7 better than N7? Uh, what is J7? J... Oops. Da. Sorry, you guys don't know what's happening, but I'm being overwhelmed by Skype messages. Uh... Let's see, is J7 better than N7? What's N7? Um, mm, oh, that one. Okay, is J7 better? Okay, so let's go back to that. And find there. Um, well, the question for that, then, is do these two stones have a relationship? That sounds really weird now that I ask that. Are these two stones connected, is what I'm asking. Answer to that is no. They don't really have a connection. Again, that sounds creepy. So what I'm probably going to do is go ahead and cap. We're going to get into the same similar idea that, you know, black's going to connect. And then I'm just going to go back and disconnect this. So no, not that much better, I'm afraid. It's about the same. But thank you for the question. And on that note, I'll have another lecture week after next. Thank you all for stopping by. Oh, wait, sorry, Young should get another question. Can B now play G7? Okay, what is G7? G7 is this. Um, can play it, sure, but still not connected. So, we still have a problem here. Hmm. And on that note, I will see you guys next time. Thank you all for stopping by, and I hope you see you then. Take care.